Fear Not, Episode 24. Hi, I'm Billy Atwell, and I believe that consistently facing your fears is the only way to realize your truest self and to make those confident choices that will help you to obtain your deepest held hopes and dreams. I have faith that this podcast series will show you that you are not alone, that it will strengthen you and give you courage to face your fears, and that it will help you to permanently cross over into a life of living beyond your fears. Join me on this journey as we listen and learn from others as they share their experiences in facing and overcoming their own fears. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show today. Today's guest is Zoe McKee. Welcome to the show today, Zoe. How are you? Oh, hi, Billy. Thanks for having me. I'm fantastic. I mean, I love Mondays. Monday is my favorite day of the week because it's always full of new promises. You know, I know people usually hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like it, too. So it's all good. <laughs> Are you ready to fear not today? Sure, I'm ready to go. Zoe McKee is a communication and social development coach and Amazon bestselling author, including the book Catching Courage, How to Stop Hesitating, Take Control Over Your Anxiety, and Believe in Yourself. She's lived on her own from a young age, which has shaped her sense of tenacity, perseverance, and self-worth. She brings over 10 years of practical knowledge in her coaching and books, and she truly believes that whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve, be it a healthier lifestyle, more confidence, or building up a million-dollar worth company. She has a BA and graduate degree in international studies, and she speaks five languages fluently and has clients from all around the world. She believes that speaking with people in their mother tongue helps them to understand her message better, create deeper friendships, and makes the experience more genuine. When she's not on her mission to change the world, she loves to paint, do CrossFit, and dance Zumba. Zoe, can you take a few seconds to just to sort of fill in the gaps and maybe give us a brief glimpse of your personal life? Oh, sure. So, like, as you read uh, my short introduction, it's sort of what I do generally. I'm like a very simple person. Recently, I travel a lot. Like, I, I used to li be living a very stationary life, but right now I'm more. I spend more time in the United States, so I can I can get my audience better because, like, my, my main profession right now, let's say, is the, the book writing. So I'm a full time writer and like part time coach let's say so uh, but my main audience is in the united states so i was wondering that if i write the book mainly for them then i should i should understand them better i should understand what their needs are what are their pain points how can i help them better so i decided to sort of move in uh, the united states half half time and half time spent in europe to to be able to give like a more genuine experience through my books to my readers uh, otherwise I do CrossFit still I do the Zumba I'm like a very regular girl I like to go to Nicholas Sparks movies and cry a lot on them so yeah that's me <laughs> okay well thank you so much for sharing Zoe could you share with us today one of the biggest fears that you've had to face yeah of course uh, I mean I think that the biggest fear always depends on the timeline I think my biggest fear is my most recent fear, which I had to face and overcome. So I think I will, I will talk about that, which actually is indirectly talking with you too. Um, you might have noticed that I'm not a native English speaker. And this was my biggest, biggest wall to overcome, to, to be here and to be able, you guys, to be able to know me, to read my books and to have this podcast, to, to collect the courage to speak out, even though I'm not a native speaker, to speak to people who don't speak my my main language, uh, and and to be able to communicate a message to them, to gather my thoughts appropriately with my language, like limited, let's say, language knowledge, and 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 to be able to overcome this. So technically, my biggest fear is to just stand out in front of an, an a foreign audience at this level. So what are you doing to help yourself overcome that fear? Actually, I was having like, I had a lot of second thoughts about this. I was like sitting in a place and 
contemplating how should I do it? What I, I was full of fears, you know, fear of judgment. What if they will think I'm stupid? What if they will think that I cannot express myself? I'm a shitty writer. I, I cannot give my message through because of my language gap. So I had all these limiting beliefs in a package, which probably many of us experience it once in their lifetime or twice or many times. And the, the greatest decision or the greatest step I did was to 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 relieve myself from this decision fatigue of bad 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 feelings so i made the decision that yes i will do it yes i will go to that podcast i will talk on that podcast i will publish that book and then i released myself from the tension of whether or not doing it it was clear that i will do it so my next step was to think about how can i do it the best way since i decided to do it so what my suggestion is usually for people, if they have a fear to do something or not, to decide whether they want or not, or don't want to do it. Because if they choose to do it, then it's much, much easier. So they will still have that tension, that stress, that optimal level of stress, let's say, because it's normal. It would be very bad if we wouldn't have some, some sort of excitement about things. But, but if you decide to do it, then you're it's only left to do it to do your best job possible so it's no that it's not there anymore that that sense of whether should i do it or i should not do it so you just go for it and if you decide to not do it for some reason because you're not so interested you realize or it wouldn't give so much for you professionally or any other reason you might have then decide stick to not doing it but then don't feel sorry about it just let it go then and look for the next opportunity uh, what else do you do that helps you to keep out of fear do you have any personal habits that you could share with us today of course uh well this is the big picture what i just presented uh i could maybe describe the best way if you just it's it's an exercise it's it's in my book uh but i present it for you here so look at your two palms and put them together and then try to take it closer to your eyes and take your palms closer and closer uh, until it almost covers your eyes. What can you see? Not much, right? Because it's just your palms. Uh, but then now take away your palms, put them in your legs. What can you see? Everything. Fear is like your palms. Like fear is always with you. You can never get rid of fear. Uh, you, it will always be there, a part of your body, just like your palms. But it's a very big difference if you give a focus for it, like the, your palms being in front of your eyes or just being somewhere around you, knowing that it's there, but overcoming it and going for, forward anyway. So I always tell people that it's not, it's not the best approach to try to get rid of fear because that's impossible. We will always have some fear around us. But if you accept it and learn to live, live with it and go, go on with courage, and this is my courage book about, to go on against your fears, against your limiting beliefs, being totally aware that there is a high chance of failure because there is always like a yes or no, you succeed or you don't succeed. But you, if you still learn to go and to do what you want to do, then you will, then you will feel truly... Uh, good in yourself with yourself because you you have that feeling that yes I tried so my book in book catching courage I make a difference between bravery and fear uh, bravery and courage sorry like bravery is that that reckless act you know like we see it's superheroes that they they just do it they don't sense any sort of fear so it's totally the absence of fear bravery and you do it anyway like Leonidas and in the 300 this is sparta boom mm, but courage is a little bit more than a, than a state of mind it's like an emotion you experience courage with, totally with the sense of fear you know that it's there but you you overcome this fear and you do what you do what you want to do anyway so what i do in my daily lives to prevent fear is that i just put myself to the question does this fear uh, is this fear real like what's the worst case scenario if my fear turns to be true what is the worst thing can possibly happen and if i have that worst case scenario and i don't 
brainstorm about it for hours to achieve, to get to the worst case scenario, but instantly I cut that thread and I just jump there. And then I start thinking about how can I come out of that worst case scenario? What can I do to prevent that worst case scenario? Then I will have a change of thoughts, not spiraling down to the worst option, but spiraling upwards from the worst option to the best option. And, you know, as Mark Twain said, I had many fears in my life from which many never happened. It's true. And I have to say the the palm visualization technique, I, I was doing it as you were, um, you know, instructing and it's actually really good. It's, it's a really great way to think about that because it's like fear is always there, but you just put it somewhere else. <laughs> you know, it, yep, right? You just, you just, <laughs> you just move just it, it, move it away from your eyesight. That's probably the best thing I've ever heard it described. So thank you for that. Oh, then, sure. <laughs> I'm sure that you've discovered really, really great resources, um, having read some of your books and just I would think that your personal journey. Would you mind sharing some of those with us? Mm, my best resources. I think that the best resource I ever read to improve my communi communication skills, which was one of my greatest fears, was How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. I think that that book is such a good complex writing of how to treat people fairly, justly, and friendly that that there was no such a good book written since then, and it's like a pretty old book. So I think that most of our fears are connected to other people, like what will other people think about us? What if other people judge us? What if we cannot fit other people's expectations? And this particular book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, it's a very good summary about how can you how can you overcome, how can you do your best part to not be judged, to not be harsh with others, to not offend others, and thus like uh, diminishing the best way, the possibility that you will be actually judged or somebody will be angry about you. You cannot prevent these things, like you cannot satisfy everybody 100%. But at least you can you can reduce the chances to do so. So this is a very good book I read about this topic. And also, uh, there is this little booklet of collection of quotes, Brave Enough by Cheryl Strayed. Uh, that is also a book which I could very much recommend. Like maybe you guys know it better by the movie Wild with Reese Witherspoon. Uh, it's the same author, so the book is by the same author, Cheryl Strayed. Uh, I think these, these are the two books I can remember now related to fear, which were inspiring me a lot. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Are you ready for the speed run? Of course, I'm ready. What individual that's fictional or real has made the most impact on your life? I think my stepmother did, yes. If you could change one thing in the world instantly, what would that be? Um... I would banish hunger from the face of the earth. What's your biggest weakness? Uh, being very irritable sometimes and I have lack of patience with certain things. What's your biggest strength? Mm, I'm very adaptable. I can adapt very easily to hostile circumstances. And if you could have only one book to read, what book would that be? And maybe I would, I would read again How to Win Friends and Influence People. What's your idea of a vacation? Uh... A little cottage, middle of the forest, no internet, nothing, just the sounds of the nature and a computer and some electricity, I guess. What's your favorite sound? Mm, the sound of the rain. What parting advice might you have for us today, Zoe? Mm, well, I would like to thank people for listening to this podcast. And I would like to advise that if anybody has any fear which they are dealing with to not be weird about it because facing fear like feeling fear is something totally normal it's something natural it's part of our being human like from our ancestors is coming this flight or fight effect right we were always prepared to face some hostile circumstances this is why we felt fear we were always negative because if our ancestors would have been positive they would have probably been killed by some wild animal or a like an, an inimical tribe, right? So negativity and fear are totally normal part of your life. But you can, however, 
do some very conscious exercises and conscious you can pay attention consciously to overcome it and not let defeat like dominate your life just like i it was the palm exercise you can you can decide whether you want to have it in focus your palms and not see almost anything or you just put your palms in a pocket not that it's there but you go on move on look at the beauty of the street you look at the beauty of the area you're facing because whether or not you feel the fear and it's always there, you face something wonderful in, ahead of you and you always turn, you will always see that your life is turning to the better. Even sometimes it's down, there is always an upside. Thank you for that. Someone, If someone would like to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Mm, I think that through my website, uh, com. And there you can find my social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter. You can connect me with, through email. Great. Thank you. And I want to thank you so much for joining us today, Zoe. It's been really great talking to you and getting to know you, having read some of your books. It's, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you for coming on. Thank you, Billy, for inviting me. Thank you for joining me today. And remember, you cannot achieve everything, but you do have the God-given ability to achieve anything. So stay focused, out of fear, and keep on keeping on. Until next time, be well and peaceful. For more information on today's episode and guest, or for resources that will assist you in overcoming your fears, visit livingbeyondyourfears.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast, where three times a week we move to a life beyond our fears.